the knife is a Spyderco native in CPM S110V. It's been reground by Big Brown Bear and taken extremely thin behind the edge. I've been asked to do a video of a full sharpening of a high carbide steel for quite some time and I thought that this knife would be appropriate and that this steel would be appropriate to do it. I wanted to take the edge completely off the knife for this video and show that it, it had no cut left to it at all before sharpening, sharpening the knife and taking it to a high level of sharpness. After taking the edge completely off, I was using uh, vitrified diamond water stones from Practical Sharpening, starting with 160 grit. And I really wanted to rebuild the edge bevel and especially the apex of the knife, really start over. The 160 grit from Practical Sharpening cuts beautifully. It just chews through stuff, including S110V. It really doesn't take much time to uh, rebuild the edge bevel and apex the knife using that stone. When Sean reground this knife for me, I didn't ask him to take it as thin as he did. I just asked him to thin it out for me and kind of let me start over with the blade. It had been over sharpened. He made the decision on his own to take it as thin as he did, which was extremely extremely thin behind the edge but i really appreciate him doing it because cpm s110v is it's such an interesting steel to work with uh, between it the level of difficulty to sharpening it coupled with the the kind of edge that it'll take and i've put in a lot of time with s110v a lot of time with it and it's a steel that i very much enjoy but Sean taking this knife as thin as he did really gave a lot of a lot of life to the knife and uh, really allowed me to push the limits with it and experiment with it without eating up the knife and creating a very large bevel on it. It also makes it an extremely efficient cutting tool. Kind of a specialty item given the hardness of the steel and the carbide content and everything that goes into it. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't, I don't think Sean would take something this thin with this high of carbide content and want to put it in the hands of a of an end user that didn't know what they were doing. But Sean doing this for me is definitely something that I very much appreciate. The stone that I'm working with at this point in the sharpening is a thousand grit diamond water stone. Um, I'm, I'm really moving through the sharpening quickly at this point. The thousand grit really starts to refine the edge. These products from Practical Sharpening and the resin bonded diamond water stones from Veneve really make it possible to work with these high carbide steels, especially steels that are, that are very heavy in MC type carbide. Um, steels where using conventional water stones alumina based stones it's going to it's going to cause a problem you're going to see uh, very slow development of the edge very slow polishing carbide tear out or carbide interference and the, the fact that we have access now to to diamond water stones is really a beautiful thing for working with these steels in this case, not only am I sharpening the knife, taking it from extremely dull to a very high level of sharpness, but on top of that, the final edge that I'm going to put on the knife is an extremely fine edge, an extremely polished edge, and that's really due to the characteristics of diamond water stones and sharpening. At this point in the sharpening, the stone that I'm using is a 3000 grit vitrified diamond water stone. After the 3000 grit, we move to all resin bonded diamond water stones. So different thing there, um, different product. Now they're both diamond water stones, but the vitrified diamond water stones tend to behave differently, cut differently, feel a little bit different than the resin bonded stones do.
working with the diamond water stones with S110V, I'm not worried about corrosion. S110V has 15.25% chromium. Uh, it's still got a lot of carbon at 2.8%, but 15.25 chromium, it's a pretty good amount of chromium. S110V has better corrosion resistance than 440C, just to put it in perspective. So it's really, I'm not worried about the, the water being part of the equation here, working with these stones. Working with the 6K resin bonded diamond water stone from Practical Sharpening at this point, I'm really bringing the polish up. This stone is a prototype stone from Practical Sharpening. I'm not sure if they're going to end up producing it or not, offering it to the public or not. Um, I have very much enjoyed using it and it does a very good job. This is really the point in the sharpening where you start to see the the polish of the, ape, of the edge bevel come up and you really start to see the sharpness come up just off the stone. Working with a knife this thin, this kind of geometry is really a pleasure as a sharpener. This is much, much thicker behind the edge uh, than it was when Big Brown Bear originally sent it to me after it was first reground. And even at this point, I'm, I'm getting measurements uh, at the shoulder of the bevel, of the edge bevel, between 0.2 and 0.3 millimeters. I'm probably averaging, really it's, it's probably on average between 0.2 and 0.25. So you're, you're still talking an extremely thin geometry on the knife. Um, from an aesthetic standpoint, uh, the size of the bevel, and keep in mind this bevel's at 30 inclusive, so it's not obtuse, and it's hard to even see that it's there. It's, it's really, not only is it a pleasure to use as a cutting tool because of the efficiency of it, the lack of resistance uh, going through material, but to sharpen it is very pleasurable. Uh, it sharpens much faster, much easier than a knife would that it would have a thicker geometry behind the edge and consequently a wider edge bevel of the same angle uh, sitting on the knife. At this point in the sharpening, I've moved on to Veneve's OCB resin bonded diamond water stones using their seven to five micron stone or 800 grit stone. Their 800 grit is different than other systems 800 grit. What's relevant is the seven to five micron rating. I've been using the Veneve's uh, OCB stones as my final stones, my finishing stones when doing high carbide steels. Uh, I've been using them quite a bit lately and very much enjoying the performance that I'm finding out of the stones. The final stone that I'm using here is a 3 to 2 micron stone. It's uh, Veneve's 1200 grit OCB resin bonded diamond water stone. The polish that this stone leaves is really, really impressive. Um, on the low end of the scale, it's a two micron stone. So, and it performs that way. I mean, the, the polish that it leaves comes off like a two, like it's coming from a two micron stone. It's a perfect setup, in my opinion, to move on to a one micron strop. I mean, if you're making a movement from a two micron stone to a one micron strop, it's a very natural, consistent movement as far as uh, the abrasive is concerned. I also find that the stone, as far as uh, burr formation is concerned, is not aggressive at all. So with a little bit of burr reduction before moving on to the strop, I haven't had the burr, I haven't found it to be a problem at all. It's important moving through the, the sharpening, especially at this end stage, to look for spots uh, where the polish hasn't come up. Uh, anything cloudy or hazy, you don't want to put that all on the strops. The strops can take out some of it, but what you can remove with the stone, it's good to get it done. It's also worth noting that the diamond water stone's ability to, uh, to cut 
even using stones as fine as a as the three to two micron from beneath it's still you can take out cloudy spots easier i guess given that it's diamond than you would be able to with say an aluminum stone not only on this stone, but moving through the entire sharpening, burr formation is necessary with every stone. I've been checking this through the sharpening just by feel, as opposed to using a light or some other means of it. Um, there are times where I just run my finger across the blade and it's, it's probably hard to even see what it is that I'm doing, but what I'm feeling for is burr formation up the length of the entire blade before I move from one side of the knife to the other or from one stone to the next. What I'm doing at this point is burr reduction. It's very light strokes that seem very similar to other things that I'm doing. I don't tend to take uh, strange steps or strange movements when I'm, when I'm doing burr reduction. I don't strop the knife on the stone. I mean, it's it's very similar to what I'm doing the rest of the time sharpening. It's just a difference in pressure and a difference in intent on what's going on in the stone. I almost feel like I'm aiming for the burr. And with a lot of stones, I can feel the burr kind of break away on the stone. And as long as you don't put too much pressure and too many strokes into it, you're not going to really form a burr to the next side. Or if you do, it's not very severe. It's small enough that it easily comes off with the first strop. Moving to straps, the strap that I'm starting with is a one micron diamond strap, poly diamond emulsion. Again, moving to a one micron strap from a three to two micron stone is a very natural, clean movement to make. Given a little bit of burr reduction, it's it's very easy for the one micron strop to remove any burr formation that's there. It really doesn't come off as a problem at all. It's important to remove any excess compound from the edge before moving on to the next strop. Uh, with one micron strops and four micron strops, especially right after you've loaded them, you can have excess compound hang around on the edge and you don't want to carry that with you when you're moving on to the next strop. I'm not real fanatical about keeping my strop separate and clean and all that. I'm actually pretty relaxed about it, but removing excess compound from the edge is still something that I watch out for. You're going to, if you don't, and you've got excess compound left on the knife, you're going to take it directly from one strop to the next and you're not doing yourself any favors that way. The final strop is a 0.1 micron strop. I've been using 0.1 micron quite a bit lately, and I'm really enjoying that as a, as a finishing point for stropping. And I'm not saying it's the end all be all. I mean, give me enough time and I'll be, I'll be onto a different habit. But as of lately, I've been using 0.1 as a, as a stopping point. It's 10th of a micron, um, in some cases, I jump right from a, a one mic to a, a 0.1 mic, and in some cases, I throw a quarter micron in the mix. Depending upon what you're doing with the sharpening, either, either one is fine, but in this case, I wanted to take the time to make the movement from a one mic to a quarter mic and then finish with a 0.1 micron. The final check of the edge is against a hair. The edge came up how I wanted it to. It was hair whittling sharp and I was very pleased with the, the final outcome. In the end, the bevel is consistent. It's a fine polished edge and it's hair whittling sharp. The abrasives that I was using in this sharpening are, are very high quality abrasives. The knife, the steel is also very high quality and the regrind is unbelievable. I really, for any sharpeners out there watching, using a knife that's reground to this kind of geometry is really something that I recommend. If you get a chance to do it, you should really try it out and see what you think of it because it really sets a new standard in your mind for how things can be.